Is overthinking good for us? And should we keep doing it? That's what we'll talk about today. Take time to deliberate, but when the time for action has arrived, stop thinking and go. Napoleon Bonaparte. He has good quotes from time to time for all of his other flaws. Today I'm going to talk about the book, Overthinking, by Daniel Michaels. The rest of the topic, words that he uses for this book, kind of explains the problem with the book is he incorporates too much in it. He tries to get you to meditate and build self-esteem and declutter, and none of that has to do with overthinking. And he says that overthinking is um, a model. It helps us be safe. And we do it because we're trying to get decisions done. And when we come up with a great plan, it's good. You know, thinking about something and planning for something is, is fantastic. But he says oftentimes it leads us to reliving the situations over and over again or, or reading emails over and over again, obsessing. And I know I've done this before ab about the last word said in a conversation or being so afraid of getting something wrong. You can't get a project at work done because you can't hit send. I mean, I had that it's Friday finishing up my work. I was working on something and I felt like something I worked on was OK, but it wasn't the best thing I ever created. And do I send it? just as a conversation starter? Or do I save it until next week where I can do more of a deep dive on it? You know, that's always the point. But he says at some point, when we start to overthink, we start seeing, he says, patterns where none exist. It may cause insomnia, stress. It may do damage to us physically, at least mentally, for sure. And then he says it can actually bring us to jump to conclusions that are just not even true, that we think people hate us or that people are against us or anything like that, that we have to get away from that kind of thinking. Otherwise, we'll just get into these ruts. And, and then they become self-reinforcing. I knew someone when I went to college and I thought, I don't know how to get her out of this pattern. But she got into this loop where she thinks nobody liked her. And then she would greet us, like come to a party or you know a thing. And then she'd be like, well, I know none of you like me. And then she would get bitter and angry at us. And then nobody liked her. And it wasn't because nobody liked her in the first spot. It's because she got into this rut of negativity. I think that was this overthinking that he's talking about. And if we get into that rut, then we can just keep replicating the issue over and over again. He says the other part of it, too, is that we can get into these situations where we're just floating around, not getting to a decision, never coming to a direction never making changes in our lives, never getting that new job or moving to that new place or doing that new thing because we're overthinking the decision and we just get stuck in the same area all the time. And he said that punishments and rewards overall will reinforce good behavior or even bad behavior. But if we start getting rewarded for this rut we're in, now we're in trouble. And so his it, an idea of all of this is how can we get out of this rut? How can we break out of this system of overthinking that we're doing? Sometimes people used to call this analysis paralysis, where you just can't even move because you're just thinking about things so much and now you're stuck. Again, it can make you stressed. It can destroy your ability to think about things or even act on things. Then when you stop sleeping, you start having some mental health issues, some physical health issues. And now your productivity, your creativity is gone because you can't get anywhere. And it may even be, this article talks about, that your relationships suffer. Because if you're constantly putting other people in that, they're against you. Like that person in college who thought everyone hated her. And so she acted in such a way that everyone ended up disliking her. You can now break up those relationships. And then your happiness goes down and your satisfaction in life goes down. And so then the question is, what can you do? If you're overthinking about these things, you're just ruminating. And, and that word ruminating means what cows do when they chew cud. They're constantly just chewing it around and chewing it around and chewing it around instead of like we do when we eat our tacos too fast, <laughs> just choo -choo -choo, boom, they're gone. And then if you're self second guessing yourself, what do you do? How do you get out of that so that you stop getting into those ruts of overthinking? And so part of it is that you're going to have to break out of those circles and start going out of this way. 
So first, some things that you can do in order to get out of these ruts of overthinking is first of all, take a look at what your values are. Think about what matters to you, what's important to you. A lot of times, if you're stuck between two decisions, whatever your value system is will help you decide on a particular way. Mine, obviously, is Christianity. And so it helps me in making my decisions. Sometimes it hurts me in making my decisions because I'm trying to fit in my faith and also fit what I look at as my needs in the world. You know, I also need to make money, but I also I want to be a good Christian. You know, so sometimes it complicates things. But looking at your values helps. Journaling so that you can get some ideas down, get them out of your head so they're rumbling around. If you do something where you can actually write them down, sometimes it becomes quite obvious what it is you're supposed to be doing. He says in his book that you should act, do something, act in some manner. Even if your MO is overthinking, if you could just send that email, talk to that person, do whatever it is that you're trying to do. He says the evidence will be quite clear about what it is you should be doing. Let's say you're in a rut with a friend. Maybe it's that person in my college who thinks everyone doesn't like her, and so she acts in such a way that everyone doesn't like her. What if one time she just showed up at the party and didn't say any of that stuff? And what if we all had a good time? She would see evidence that what she's thinking is not true and that maybe her other actions are hurting things. He gets a bit into meditation and minimalism, which I get, you know, when you have left stuff around or you clear your brain of things, it's easier to focus on those things. I think that it's not as good, I guess, as a particular tactic for overthinking. I think they're great tactics, but I think that when it comes to overthinking, maybe that is just a more trendy thing of minimalism than it is helpful. And then he says what you can do is schedule a worry window. Meaning that every day for 30 minutes, you sit down, you write down all your worries. Maybe it's part of your journaling. And if you don't get to them, you missed a few, don't worry. You're going to have more times to write them down. But sometimes just getting them out of your brain and onto a piece of paper and having a slotted time frees you up. There are times when I worry about certain things. I was working on something that I didn't quite plan for the way I should have. And so it's going to be kind of a gruesome March and April for me financially, but that's okay. You know, I realize at times that there are worries involved in that. I came up with a plan and wrote it down on paper. Let's just get it out of our head because now I can take those steps. He even calls them small steps and start working towards the solution for it. And as we take that action, we'll be able to see what is accurate in our worrying and our overthinking and what's not so accurate. And he says that if you, are doing this 30-minute thinking, that you make sure that you talk about what you want and what not instead of what you don't want. You want to make sure that you talk about the goal. My goal is to, by the end of April, get financially back on the wagon again. I had a roof. I had a bunch of things. I changed jobs. There's some tax implications. I have just been bleeding money like crazy for the last couple of months. I just moved the website. That also cost money. So instead, of talking about what I don't want. Oh, I want to stop spending money. Instead, talk about what I want. I want to get back on the financial path that I was on before all these things happened. Put in detail about what is that it is that you want. And then question yourself, he says, when you're worrying, could I be wrong? Am I maybe making a mistake? Am I mind reading other people? Is there even evidence about what I'm worried about or what I'm thinking about even true? So again, you have directions you could go. And then he says, when you close the book, close the book. That's the end. You're not going to think about it until your next 30-minute worrying session comes in. I thought that was really great advice. And then practice tuning out those worries after the worry session. If you see it, I know Headspace always talks about imagining your worries as clouds and you're sort of just pushing them away. You don't want to do the pink elephant thing. No, I'm not going to think about my worries because then all you do is think about your worries. Headspace's idea of imagining them as clouds and you're just sort of pushing or blowing them away is like, yep, there they are. I see it. Yep. There's my worry about money. Okay, great. Let's just kind of push this away for now. We'll talk about it more tomorrow at my worry half hour. That's fine. 
he says, when, when you catch yourself pushing those thoughts away and getting past it and not focusing on your worries, congratulate yourself. Even if it's a minute, hey, look, you did it for a minute. You succeeded in not thinking about this worry because the more you pat yourself on the back for that, the longer you'll be able to do it the next time. And he says that the important thing is, is that if you want to get yourself to stop focusing on those things, you cannot just tell yourself, stop thinking about X or stop doing X. You have to replace whatever it is you're overthinking with something else. So if you're thinking a lot about a particular problem with a friend, then instead replace that thinking with something else, like a strategy of what am I going to do so that we could get closer together again? We've been fighting more and we're farther away. What can I do to make it better? Or, you know, for me, if I'm worried about financial stuff at the moment, you know, I can start replacing those thoughts with other things. What will I work on doing and how will I come back to where I was before in my finances? But again, he says it doesn't help if you replace things with a vacuum. Then he says you have to understand your emotions. You know, if something's emotional or worrisome to you, make sure you understand it. Consider when you're doing your worrying session, if you have choices, write down what you think the consequences of those choices are going to be. Try to be logical, I guess. You know, this is hard because when we get wrapped up in our emotions or our fears or we think that people don't like us, try to be a little bit logical about it and try to stay connected to reality just a bit. And again, he says, ask yourself, could I be wrong? Do I have the details wrong? You know, my thought, what I tend to do is do a pros and cons. I try to do the pluses and minuses of all the decisions so I understand what's the best way to go. And I think the other good idea is that if this has really gone into an area where you can't get past the thought, it is too overwhelming to you. It is something you can't get away from and it is causing you your health. It is causing you your mental stability. That's time to get some counseling. You know, maybe you can talk to a friend. Once you usually say something that maybe you're overthinking about, suddenly the idea makes a lot more sense or the path forward makes more sense or the fact that you're overthinking and over worrying about this. Oh, now that I say it out loud, that doesn't make sense at all. You know, some, it becomes more clear once you tell someone that particular issue. But sometimes that's hard to talk about what things we're overthinking with the people closest to us. And so at that point, that might be the time where you want to get counseling. You want to talk to someone who can help you kind of sort out your feelings. So don't be afraid of that. I think there are kind of two groups of people, those who will go in for counseling, maybe for everything, and then people who will never go in, never talk to their people about anything because they don't want to talk to anyone about it. And there's nothing wrong with getting a professional second opinion. So try it out if you think you can't get unstuck. I think particularly if you get to the point, like I said, where you're just feeling anxious you feel like things are out of control, you don't know how to regroup and come back from it, or that you're so worried you're just exhausted all the time because this is so weighing on your mind. Find a way, if you can afford it or your insurance pays for it, to see if you can't get some counseling about it so that you can get out of ruts. Oftentimes when we talk about ruts and we're just stuck in this pattern of thinking, we would love to say, well, just knock it off and get out of it. It's a very stoic way of looking at things, but sometimes we can't. And sometimes someone can help us ease out of the rut easier instead of us trying to get out of it all by ourselves. I know for me, we talk us about you have to replace sometimes your thoughts with something else. Sometimes they're not other thoughts. One of the things I find most relaxing is knitting and not knitting something complicated because I'm trying to relax, but knitting for whatever reason is incredibly relaxing once you get good at it. So maybe taking a class, taking a craft class, something like that, that can be like knitting, if knitting's not your thing, that will help you feel like your brain is on something else. It takes away kind of that edge on things. And so for me, like I said, that's knitting, but for other people, it could be music, it could be singing, it could be playing the piano, it could be drawing, whatever it is you're good at, but try to find a hobby that maybe will get you some hours away from that stress. And in researching and looking at overthinking in general, there are some different types of overthinkings that they call 
cognitive distortions. And cognitive distortions are things like it's black or white. Everyone hates me or everyone loves me. Or overgeneralizing. Oh, all those people, they're just in it for this and that. And I just, you know, don't like that. Or work, they just hate me. You know, you just make these big statements that just aren't true. You know, for someone who's trying to get a promotion and you think, well, work just hates me. Maybe that's not true. Maybe your attitude is in a particular way. Or maybe the position you want just doesn't exist. Try to be a little bit more logical about that when you're doing what is called overgeneralizing. And then comes the worst is catastrophizing. Everything is a crushing failure. Everything is bad. Everything's much worse than you think. And so, again, if you can get away from that, try to do that. And the best way you can do it is go after whatever the central bad thought is. Again, that girl said everyone hated her. Nobody hated her. We all were fine with her. We met her the first week in college and she sort of drove herself into the ground. Instead of her doing that, she should be challenging these negative thinking ideas. And I realized that too when I was coming to college is that I was not making friends when I first got to college, and which is kind of weird for me because usually I do actually a pretty good job of making friends in new places. That's a gift that you get from being an only child. But I really wasn't. I think I was so stressed out about finding my people, you know, the people I would really like to hang out with, making very good friends. You know, you always hear that, that a lot of times you'll make your very best friends in college. And I think I got so overwhelmed with that. I was looking for the right situation. And so I was overthinking friendship, which is bizarre, you know, that you have to challenge that. Let's just go out and have a good time, meet people. You will find your friends. And I did. I have my college roommate is my best friend today. And so by challenging those thoughts, you'll be able to challenge the premise of what you're saying. And even some cases, it, you can work on your people skills. You know, you notice that if you have a bad habit of interrupting, I talk too much. I am a talker. That's why podcasting works for me. I realize I have to knock it back a lot because I can overwhelm a more quiet person. Think about faith as a way of putting things in God's hands. You know, when you pray, when you meditate, that you want to be able to take some of that off of you and put it in to get advice, to get help, you know, whatever it is that you need to do. I think a big step in all of this, I knew someone when I was growing up who was very into overthinking everything. I mean, oh my goodness, there was a monster behind every bush. And I suggested to her, and she never took me up, <laughs> that it would be good if she got out more, if she was able to maybe volunteer or maybe even just get a job in a small store. But I think one of the things that helps people get out of their own mental echo chamber is to start talking to other people, even if it's nothing about this particular topic. Once you start interacting with other people, you hear other people's stories. I think in this case, this person I always think of, I think if she got around other people, she would see, and maybe this isn't the right tactic, but she would see other people have a very hard life and that her life was pretty good. And she just didn't have anyone to compare it to. And so I think that would have helped her. But I think then also by knowing other people and being involved with other people, she helps them a little bit. They help her a little bit. And people start solving problems together. So it's beneficial that way. And then the last part is, is that you can start being grateful for things. You know, you start giving thanks for the things that you have because you start realizing that life is pretty good. And you can start to also talk about how grateful you are for other people. So these are great ways of tackling this overthinking problem. But I like this. I know that there are people who get into ruts. And so I hope that that's something that would be beneficial to you. And I think the last two pieces of advice I have for this overthinking part of it has to do with, first of all, exercising. Sometimes when we have so much pent up energy, I notice that if I go to the gym, I go for a walk, I get outside, I go for a bike ride. Sometimes all that energy that's churning me up inside gets burned out of me. And just the fact of exercising will help me not necessarily change my mind. 
exercising sometimes gives you a pretty good time to think, but mostly it just takes all that excess stress and, like I said, internal energy you have that you're burning yourself up with and instead tiring yourself out. And just even being a little bit more tired where you don't have the strength to deep dive into every issue you're having, strangely enough, helps quite a bit. And the next part of it is, and I know I talk in a lot of podcasts about reframing, but you want to make sure that you put things in the right light. It's not that people don't like me. I just haven't found my people yet and I need to work harder to just find my people. Or it's not that this job isn't promoting me. Perhaps there's a skill and an opportunity for me to learn something more that would be more beneficial to this company. Whatever thing you're overthinking, try to reframe it as an opportunity for you to grow, for you to do something that will make you more valuable to other people, make you more valuable to your work. And those skills that you get are always going to be beneficial. They're always going to be something useful. I got stuck in the pandemic in this house as an extrovert by myself. And my friend Allison at podfeed.com, she showed me podcasting and helped me get this podcast started. And suddenly an extrovert who was churning up all this energy thinking about how alone in this house she was, suddenly was having a podcast. I learned a new skill. I learned all sorts of new things that I didn't know that I needed to know, like how to find a good microphone. Now I'm learning about how to get a good camera. By the way, I just started my YouTube channel and recording videos. But those skills are invaluable. And it reframed the entire start of the pandemic for me. Instead of me just sitting at home stewing, I had something to do. And try to think about reframing it. Is there an opportunity here for me? Instead of dwelling on something I cannot fix, what can I do in order to get this fixed maybe in a more creative way? So my challenge to you is think about something that you've been overthinking about, something that just comes back at you time and time again, maybe something that wakes you up in the middle of the night. Is there a time every day that you could sit down 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes and write them down in a book and get them off your chest and see if that doesn't give you a huge improvement over the spinning that you're doing about this particular issue and that writing it down doesn't start giving you some insight about how to get out of the rut. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. You can email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I just mentioned it, but I started my YouTube channel. There was only two little videos on there, but it was a big thing for me because I was nervous about getting in front of the camera. So I'm trying, I'm trying to do something a little new and hopefully I'm gonna bring more short videos to that YouTube channel than a longer podcast that I do here. And remember, our steps of getting out of the rut starts with small steps.